Welcome back. Well, yes, uh, Chief Victor May joins us. Uh, he's a senatorial candidate for the Labour Party. He's been in Senate before. He's vying to go again. Good morning. Thank you for coming on, on the program today. Well. Good morning, Chamberlain. All right. So tell us, how are things panning out within your party at the moment? Because there are different permutations concerning what is happening and where all of this is headed. Well, the, the Labour Party, like all other parties, uh, is uh, preparing towards uh, contesting the election in 2023. And uh, the party is following the INEC guideline and the schedule of activities to be able to effectively take part in the election. The primaries have been conducted, and um, we are waiting for the last window for substitutions to effect necessary substitutions uh, that the party consider uh, that will give them a better standing in the elections. So we are um, upbeat and uh, we are doing everything to mobilize the electorate and we are following all the political activities in the country and uh, things that happen in other parties. So um, everybody is uh, preparing, uh, tooling up, to be able to uh, win the election. And the uh, Labour Party is uh, the party to beat in Nigeria today. But um, it's also uh, many of the impression that there are certain things that your party could do that could be very, very costly and could cost your party a lot in terms of the presidential ambition. That negotiation, either for the VP slot or the alliance with the NMPP, that seems to be a sort of Damocles. How is that panning out at the moment? Actually, uh, Chamberlain, we are surprised at uh, the recent uh, media blitz by the members of the New Nigerian uh, People's Party to continuously suggest that uh, they were locked in a negotiation with the Labour Party to have uh, a partnership or an arrangement where the two parties will work together in 2023. We are surprised to continuously say this. We, we had this um, uh, discussion precisely on the 15th of June, 15th of June, more than three weeks now. And uh, what necessitated the meeting was uh, this uh, rapprochement that the NNPP and Labour Party working together will give um, a better opportunity uh, for the presidential election to be won. And uh, uh, I was, uh, the two parties set up uh, 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 two teams, um, with myself and uh, the Labour Party chairman who led our team, our national chairman of Labour Party, Barrister Julius Abure, Dr. Doi Nokupe, the Director General of P2D Campaign Organization, and my humble self uh, went to that uh, discussion on behalf of Labour Party. Um, the NNPP uh, put forward uh, Ala Guba Galadima, um, Dr. Bafa, the former Executive Secretary of the, uh, uh, the TED Fund, and uh, Lady Bob Johnson. It was a, a three-man uh, team. We met. And when I, I listened to Mother Galadima yesterday, it was correct. We met for long hours, adjourned, and came back. And when it became obvious that it had become a dialogue between a deaf and dumb person, we called off the negotiation. It was uh, on the 15th of uh, June that the whole talks collapsed completely. The Labour Party has not averted its mind to any other further discussion with the NNPP. Uh, what we didn't do was to come back to the media and start saying we had a discussion that collapsed. But these fellows have continued to give the impression that they were still in talks with the Labour Party. Actually, the talks ended on the 15th of June. But sometimes you see even the Senator Ravi Ugwankweso tweeting that he's uh, talking with the Labour Party. A, a, a discussion he knew had ended. Because like uh, Buba Galadima said yesterday, we couldn't agree on the naughty issue of who becomes the presidential candidate. Will it be P2B of the Labour Party 
or uh, Senator Ravi Ugwampaso, they said that it is Ravi Ugwampaso that will be the presidential candidate. And we considered it not in tune with the current realities. You know, uh, even Mr. Pitobi, who is being sought after by a broad spectrum of Nigerians to be the presidential candidate, will now step down for Ravi Ugwampaso. Uh, he would have been uh, 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 injuring his reputation. Again, uh, we made the point that the, 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 the sentiment on ground, which they always dismiss as something like sentiment in politics, is that there should be power rotation between the North and the South. That even the ruling party, the uh, APC, has considered that position at that time to Southern Nigeria. How can you not be saying that um, a, a candidate that has emerged from a party from Southern Nigeria would not step down for another Northern candidate? You know, it was at that stage that uh, they became so uh, audacious in their claims that they have the population, they have the voting figures, they can even win the election without any vote from Southern Nigeria. At that point, uh, things got to an end, that there was no point continuing the discussion. If the NNPP and its presidential candidates and his, uh, his team leaders in the discussion believe that they can win the election without any collaboration from anybody from Southern Nigeria, why are we continuing? That is the essence. And uh, looking at it, at it again, saying that uh, they, they have the voting population and that they will beat Atiko and Abubakar in his local government and in his ward, and we felt it was an outlandish claim. So that discussion ended on 15th of June. I don't know why they are resurfacing it around, using that to throw some tantrums, both at uh, the Labour Party candidates and the, the, the South East people. This issue is not a Southeast uh, Northern Nigeria affair. It's about Nigeria. And it's not about uh, who has the greatest number of voters. You know, politics, the game of number are great. But we have to consider what is happening in Nigeria today. The problems ravaging Nigeria uh, are ravaging every part of Nigeria. It has nothing to do with the uh, North, South, or East, and West. The cost of diesel is 850 naira per liter. It is more in the North, even. Uh, the cost of petrol is very high. The cost of living is, is beyond the imagination. The dollar is heading to 700 naira. It's now about 610 naira in the parallel market. Nigerians are yearning for somebody who will solve these problems. And that's why the candidacy of Mr. Pitobi is resonating across Nigeria, among every group in Nigeria. It's not about where you come from, where you have the voting population. They've always had that voting population. But these problems in Nigeria have persisted. So the new thinking is no longer about somebody who will uh, say, I have the numbers, I'm going to win. Are you going to solve the problem? It's not by making claims. So the, the just, just one second, if you, can, now, if you can hear me. Just one second. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the things that a sizable number of people, you know, concerning this conversation that you, you're saying is, uh, does the Labour Party have what it takes really? There are those who say, okay, well, maybe your candidate at the presidential level, you know, has a lot going for him with so many people now. But looking at the permutations in government, you know, the, uh, the legislature, the other paraphernalia that could help him to achieve the much desired change, development, and growth that so many people who yearn for him to occupy the office of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will need are not there. You are a candidate, a, a senatorial candidate on the platform of the Labour Party. What are the chances of the Labour Party in the National Assembly? Well, uh, I don't think it is the right thing to do to consider the strength of the parties in the current National Assembly or the legislature as of today. The election is coming up in 2023. What is important at this, at this stage is what do the electorate think about who to lead them in the, in the forthcoming election? What do, what do the Nigerian people want? What do they want? They want change. And by the time you go to that election, you see that all these people will crash out in the various uh, constituencies across Nigeria. Because the people are angry that the affairs of Nigeria have, have been so mismanaged and they want a change. That is why uh, those who are making claims that uh, they have the voting number, they are not uh, looking at what is happening be behind their doorsteps. 
the youths of this country have said they have come out to take back their country, that their future has been swallowed by these men who are now claiming that they have done everything. It is not the, the, it's not the way to measure it. If you conduct an election today, Labour Party will sweep, sweep the elections across board because uh, they have seen in that party the hope that they are yearning for. The issue of uh, who are the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the structures of the parties and so on, and so on uh, these are misplaced uh, uh, criteria because the Nigerian people who have these voters' cards that they will use to cast their votes have made up their minds that APC, Labor, uh, APC and the uh, PDP have failed them, even elders. Not, not only the youth that are saying it. The other day I read Professor Ango Abdullahi, the convener of the Northern Elders Forum, dismissing APC and the PDP with relative ease that they cannot fix Nigeria. Their candidates cannot fix Nigeria. He mentioned specifically this Pankwaso and uh, Mr. Peter, you know, people who are showing some uh, hope for the nation. So if for Pankwaso specifically to begin to talk, that is only him Pardon that me. can do it. Pardon it's me, not, Senator. If, if, yeah. I, if I may come in there, you make a bold submission that if elections were conducted today, that the Labour Party would uh, record a sweeping victory. Uh, but Nigerians yeah. would have loved to see that uh, as a test of what is to come in the presidential election next year in the AKT yeah. election. And uh, one of the things that would have provided inspiration for uh, supporters of the Labour Party would have been to see your presidential candidate raise the arm of the uh, Labour Party governorship candidate in that election. Uh, but the campaigns for the Labour Party uh, were not there at that time. And um, we're waiting to see that as well in the Oshun governorship election. You know, but active participation of your party I is missing. The morning shows the day. No, no, no. no. Um, I think uh, it's, a, it's a wrong uh, uh, way of looking at it uh, you know, uh, right now. The thing is that uh, the election just came up and uh, this Labour Party is rejuvenated in the past one month. And those people who have been there uh, in the Labour Party, uh, some of them have not been uh, making serious bids and attempts at winning this election. Didn't you see that uh, the, the state election, the Labour Party candidate uh, stepped down for the APC candidate? A lot of things may have been happening there, but those things are of the past. Today, there is a lot of pressure on Labour Party uh, from people from other parties to move into Labour Party to actualize their electoral ambitions next year. So a lot of people are trooping to this party because of the viability of the platform at the moment. Uh, when you see the shift in the attitude of people, you will begin to know where to align to win the election. The massive turnout of people who want to get registered and uh, get their PVCs because of the hardship in the country, will suggest to you that these people are doing this to be able to effect the change that they deserve, you know. So the elections uh, can only be measured by the outcome of next year's general elections, not by these ones that are uh, 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 elections that are uh, about one or two, only one or two. And uh, most things have uh, gone far, uh, far away before the new force came up. The, the top force yes. and uh, all the people who are looking forward to the party, Labour Party, are satisfied that there's only one hope bearer for Nigeria now, and that person is Mr. Peter Obi. But you know, Any place just you as, you, to, as, you, as you have you noted, uh, Chief Ume, one yeah. person can't do it all. One person who is president can't do it all. Uh, you know, the questions are, you know, are, are, are quite a myriad. Uh, you mm -hmm. talked about the capacity of the Labour Party to sweep the polls in the National yes. Assembly. Will that yes. be replicated across all states? Will that be re replicated across all houses of assembly all over the nation? I mean, the no, confidence, no, no, no. just a second, the confidence that people yeah. have expressed in Mr. Peter Obi is uh, quite obvious to everyone. But he's the only one everyone is talking about in the Labour Party. No one else. He's not the only one. He's not the only one. There are so many people there. Um, by the time INEC publishes list of candidates for the 2023 general elections, you will see that uh, great people are everywhere as a candidate for this or for that. 
So um, uh, uh, what is important at this point is uh, not those who are in your party, but what the electorate wants. We have candidates put forward everywhere. In Benue State, for example, many people have defected from the National Assembly to the Labour Party and are contesting both senatorial and governorship election. So it's like that across the country. Um, the structure which they have continued to emphasize that the Labour Party does not have is misplaced. Labour Party is a party that was registered by Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. And the, the last week we met with them, they said they have structures down to the wards, 774 local governments across Nigeria. And this is their party, that this one is their project. How can you dismiss a party that is being supported and followed by the Nigerian workers? All of them. It was an open endorsement, you know, uh, last week, both TUC and uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress. We went to them and they spoke out and said, this is the party that they are looking for, singing solidarity songs. And you said they don't have structure. The structure are the people who vote. In fact, I listened to one uh, 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 pastor who said they would never vote for any party that has structure in Nigeria anymore. The video went viral. Any party that has structure, avoid it, because those that have structure have killed Nigeria. This is the issue. So the voters have made up their minds. This is what they want. It's not only Mr. Peter Obi. People but are may, everywhere. You know yes. that this goes beyond what the electorate wants. I mean, I read your interview where you talked about how Abga was nowhere, but you know yourself and Mr. Peter B brought it to where it was largely. But you know that there are lots of uncharted territories in this area that you are venturing into at the moment. If yes. uh, the labor group say they've got all that structure, so the thing, question is, what have they delivered? Can they actually deliver when push comes to shove? There's a factor of those who vote, who are induced to vote. So. All of those, I imagine they're part of what is being looked at. Are you still confident that, that all those notwithstanding, that your party can weather the storm? Now, sure. Uh, like you rightly said, in the year 2001, I started this movement for Abga with Mr. Peter Obi when he contested the governorship election in Ambra State. At that time, this issue of structure was uh, part of the things that uh, people used to dismiss us. In Anambra State, PDP was so strong on ground, and they said, hey, "Where is this party going?" They don't have it. They were laughing at us. Eventually, the election came. We swept the polls, you know, defeated PDP roundly. They rigged the election. We pursued them through the courts, and eventually got them out of the way. That's how Abga came to be in Nigeria, you know. So when you start a new team, people will not give it any chance of success, but with persistence and resilience you'll be able to overcome the challenges. Today in Nigeria, the electoral uh, umpire, the INEC, and the electoral regime have all been uh, reformed to a great extent. Before, those people who claim that they have structure will never allow elections to take place. They manipulate the process, write results, and declare themselves winners. That's how they built this structure they have today. They didn't build the structures they have today with the votes of the electorates. They did it through rigging. But with uh, careful planning and reforms on the, uh, going on in Nigeria now, INEC has come up with the templates that have started yielding positive results in the conduct of elections. With these beavers and electronic uh, 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 um, transmission of results now uh, uh, lawful, legal, you will see them. They will see big men who control their massive structures. On the day of the election, they will be sweating. Because the only people that are suffering the brunt of bad leadership and governance in Nigeria are angry with them, but they're claiming them as their structure because they control state government, they do this and do that. I'll tell you that Nigerians will be surprised at the attitude of the Nigerian electorate in 2020. Mr. Omer, this hardship is pervading, and everybody is eager to have a change and some uh, you know, uh, uh, relief. From the, 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 the scorching hardship the Nigeria is facing. Very, yeah? very quickly, uh, I wonder if the attitude of Nigerians, uh, you know, particularly in support of Mr. Mr. Pitobi, is 
enough to rely on if you consider that even the southeast region which the party may be resting on to get votes for mr b um you know is colored is multi-party you have apga here you have pdp here you have the all progressives congress there as well and then the southeast region the voting population is not enough to win the presidential election what are your thoughts uh, on this uh, that's what, what i'm saying these things are propaganda Efforts are being made to label you to be a Southeast presidential candidate. He is not. He's a Nigerian presidential candidate. People who are driving his uh, 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 mission in Nigeria are not mostly from the Southeast. If you look around, you'll see that even in Northern Nigeria, in Kaduna last week, the use of Northern Nigeria gathered in Kaduna to drum up support for Mr. Pito. This is not from the North. If you go to Lagos, the massive turnout of people who are wanting to get registered and get their PVC, Lagos is not Southeast Nigeria, you know? So this action is necessitated by the desire of Nigerian people to follow somebody who is making sense. All these people who are talking about what they have, uh, uh, they have going for them, the number, the voting population, they're not telling Nigerians what they are going to do. It's only P2B who is telling Nigerians what the problems are and how to solve the problems. P2B is the only one who is complaining of galloping inflation in Nigeria. P2B is the only one talking about how to change the lifestyle in Nigeria, how to change from production, I mean, from consumption to production, so that to be able to contain our economic problems. It's the only one saying it. Somebody will come out and say, I have the number. People will vote for me. They not will not vote for people to be. And they say they don't, they're not, they're not campaigning again anymore on the basis of where you come from. And they are very uh, 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 mindful of the statement they are making that if people becomes the candidate, that they not will not vote for people to be. What a contradiction in, in, in argument. So what I'm telling you is that going forward, the Nigerian people who are supporting people to be cut across uh, cultural, religious, and tribal lines. Yes, if P2B is not a candidate, uh, they want to label him an evil candidate uh, so that they begin to use their feudal uh, uh, control over those uh, they've been manipulating in the past to gain advantage. They, they don't want to take it because Peter has asked a question. What is the cost of bread in Kano? What is the cost of bread in Medugri? Is it different from the cost of bread in Lagos or uh, Enugu or anywhere? The problems in Nigeria are general and people are feeling the brunt of this bad governance. So let them not uh, pretend that they don't know that people are moving away from the past. People are looking for somebody who will bring the change. If Nigeria succeeds, everybody will be happy. If we continue to vote along those primordial lines and sentiments, it means that the, the nation will be stuck at its present stage. There's no solution. As I told, giving you the statistics now, unemployment, the universities are on strike, are on strike. Ashley is on strike. Our students have been at home doing nothing. Unemployment, unemployment is very high. So people are bearing this, not these people contesting this election. They must think about the attitude of the people who will cast these votes, not themselves contesting the election. They are big men. They are not the people suffering. Mark Waso is not a, a, is not a man of the masses. Let him stop deceiving anybody. All Why right, are we um... still having Amajiris in Kano? Amajiris are everywhere in Kano. This is a state he said he governed for eight years and transformed. But poverty is ravaging a lot of young people there. So people will look beyond those claims in deciding who they will vote for. Nigeria we need is a Nigeria where life will be better for everybody, where All there right, will be gentlemen. prosperity in the land, where there will be shift from the way things are being done. Somebody right. said the other day that the cost of governance is not a problem in Nigeria because people be, have been conversing, cut down on the cost of governance, where people who are elected appropriate the funds belonging to the country they will use to do services for the people. They spend the monies in luxury. Today, our debt profile is uh, amazing. Well, Nigeria, the other day I saw the, on the, the line that the issue is uh, never that's, I'm coming, please. These are the issues I'm coming. The debt profile of this country is so terrible that those who are wanting to become president, even if they have the number, they don't know how to resolve the debt issue of Nigeria. How can you continue borrowing money to finance everything you do in Nigeria? The money you generate, you use it in servicing debts. And you have 200 million, over 200 million people in Nigeria with various needs. 
So we need somebody who will put all these things in reverse. And the only person who is making sense is Mr. P2B, because he's somebody, I can tell you, if you accuse him of anything, management of resources is number one. This is somebody who can stay in the midst of plenty of money and will not get into his head. He, he, he gets value for any money he will spend. And that's why Nigeria is a, a, a suffering now. People who are running Nigeria are not running Nigeria like a business. Where you do business, you expect to make profits. In Nigeria today, any money that comes is squandered. Nothing is being invested in a manner that you can earn uh, profit or anything. So it's a sharing economy that we are running. All right. And Mr. people are campaigning against it. That's what people are seeing. That's why they're following him. They're not following him because he's handsome or that he's doing this. He's making sense. All right. He's we, telling we do them, appreciate he's your... the nerves on the head. We well, appreciate your perspective this morning, uh, Chief Victor May, Senatorial Candidate of the Labour Party. Thank you for your time today.